The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That has to be one of the most powerful statements of faith and confidence in God. I shall not want. And I always point out those words like shall because it's such a powerful affirmation of who God is and what only God can do. I shall not want. When we think about the world today and all of the things that are going wrong, whatever is going wrong in your life, any situation where there are areas where there may seem to be lack, think about the confidence in the statement. I shall not want. It's that kind of faith that moves God. And no matter what circumstances may be, the bills are mounting up, the demands are overwhelming at work, your children seem like they just won't do right. Maybe there's an issue with the spouse, whatever it is, I shall not want. It's not the will of God for us to be lacking in any area and just when we jump into this passage the first line the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want see sometimes we fall into lack because we allow ourselves to be shepherded by someone or something other than God but if we commit to the power of God we submit to the will of God the way that a sheep would submit to a shepherd then we will lack nothing, complete, entire, lacking nothing. I'm Volante and this is the Sunday School Renaissance, formerly known as the Sanctuary Academy. If you've been here over the years, thank you so much for your continued support. If this is your first time, I want to extend a warm welcome to you and please introduce yourself in the comments so that we can get to know each other as we explore the word of God together. This week's subject is confidence in God's shepherding. And of course, it's a very familiar passage, the 23rd Psalms. And this is a passage that most of us learned as a child. I think I may have been about six when my mom taught me this. And it's something that we can kind of spit off. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But when you take the time to actually go through this verse and see how powerful it is. Again, the very first line, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want how profound that statement is. And this is a part of our unit, which is the Psalms of Thanksgiving and praise. And of course it's timely because we're moving into Thanksgiving, which is my absolute favorite time of the year. And it's a really good time for us to reflect on the goodness of God. And just over the year and over the years, just to take a moment to say thank you to the Lord and just even to appreciate people that he has placed in our lives. And when we look at this, we know that David was not only the king of Israel, but he was a shepherd. That was his humble beginning as a shepherd. And when you look at the nature of a shepherd, a shepherd, a shepherd doesn't just watch sheep. A shepherd, he leads, he protects and he guides them. And so David, because he had been a shepherd by profession, he used this metaphor when he was speaking about the Lord. And this is what we see in verses two and three. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Now, green pastures speak to provision and still waters speak to safety because as we know, sheep are covered in wool. So what do you think would happen if something or someone that's covered in wool were to be against a racing body of water and to fall in? You can't, there's no way you would be able to stay afloat. So we look at the second verse, green pastures, again, provision, a still waters protection. And that is the metaphor that he uses here. And when you think about that, sometimes God's provision and protection for us is so powerful until we don't even notice there are things that we can so easily take for granted and that's why i love that we're doing this unit about the psalms of thanksgiving and praise to so just take a look around and even if you want to pause the video but at some point this week just stop and think about the green pastures, the provision that God has made for you. What do you have? The things that you take for granted daily, the things that you see, stuff like food, shelter, clothing, 
in the sky, the oxygen, just, just all of these things that God has provided. And then the still waters, the protection. And the old people used to say, I can't say that no more because I'm getting older. But when I was younger, the older people would say he protects us from dangers seen and unseen. And, and I have a habit the minute every time I pull into my garage, I just holler out, Lord, I thank you because it didn't have to be so, especially in this day and age. And I know that things are tough. The world is waxing more and more evil. And we don't want to always be complaining about what we don't have, what isn't going right, or how poorly we're being treated. We want to take some time and really thank the Lord for the provisions that he has made. And then we move into uh, what I would refer to as David's own personal testimony, right? He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. We look at these things, just more and more reasons to thank God. And I'm actually starting a series that starts with restoration. And it just talks about that. And, and when I'm just going to give you a brief snippet of that, because sometimes when we think about restoration, we think in terms of getting back what I lost. Restoration is more than that. Restoration is getting to the place where God had ordained you to be, especially in David's case, David anoint God anointed David to be king. And from the time of his anointing to the time of him actually ascending to the throne, a whole lot happened. He went down with the Philistines. He was all these places. He was down at Ziklag and all of this stuff had happened between that time. He was hunted down literally by Saul. He went through all of these things. But when it came time for God to restore him and put him at that level of being the king, which is what his anointing was, God did not fail. I'm just going to pause here because some of you, somebody out there, has an anointing. There is an anointing on your life. And sometimes when you do things or fall into situations, it may feel like you no longer have your anointing. One time I taught on a series that said, I still have my anointing. Whatever it is that God has anointed you to do, whatever it is that God has promised you, whatever assignment that God has given you, don't forsake that. Never let that go. Wherever life leads you, hold on you you still have that anointing and you want to honor the anointing of God in your life and it says he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for who his name's sake see it, it's it, it can be difficult especially maintaining a certain level of righteousness and salvation but it has to be for his name's sake we have to keep our focus if our focus remains centered on God then he will keep us. He will lead us. We can't allow the focus to be on us, what we want, what we want to do, or, or the pastor or the bishop. Sometimes we, or sometimes I've seen people um, prioritize a position or what somebody else has to say about what they're doing over what God has actually called them to do. But it says, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And that is so powerful when David talks about that. And when you really, like I said, delve into the Psalm, I'm sure most of us can recite it, but when you really delve into this and think about what the Psalmist is saying here, it's life changing. And I know, as I've said, I've been kind of struggling getting back into these lessons because life lives, but God guides and God shepherds, the Lord shepherds. And so God can shepherd us the Lord can shepherd us through the most difficult times of our lives. Like I said, David went to the time where he was literally hunted down by Saul. Saul was trying to kill him. And when you talk about danger like that, and, and I think about that because the world has changed. And sometimes we might say, oh, I'm not going to church because it's just bad out there. It's rough out there. Okay. It is danger, dangerous, and there are people out there, but imagine running and somebody is hunting you down. Not just somebody, the king is hunting you down, has a bounty on your head. But David managed to still give thanks and praise the Lord through that. And so we want to take that example and always find a way to give God thanks and praise. Then he talks about walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, 
they comfort me. And, and this is it right here because life is not always going to be easy, as I said before. But when you're facing dire situations, what are you going to do? Are you going to be scary? Are you going to be weak? They used to sing a song when I was little that said, God can't use no coward soldier. You have to be strong. And, and I'm just going to throw a personal testimony in here where I remember I lost my sister uh, to breast cancer in 2001. And the doctor came in and told us she was terminal. And I went in her room and I looked at her. I said, are you scared? She said, no, I'm ready. Just as confident, you know, and, and that it, it comes back to me quite often when I'm going through and there's situations that's kind of scary and it make you go, wow, can I handle this? And that's just something I draw from, but that's what this, this verse is talking about. When a doctor gives you a bad report, when, when you get an eviction notices, when you're getting repossession notices, I've been through all of that. When all of those things happen to you, just to just stand there and, and have comfort and have peace and know that God can and will deliver. And I really love this part right here. It says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You're going to eat. I think that's one of the popular sayings they have now. She ate. You're going to eat at the table right in the presence of those who are trying to undermine you, who are trying to undercut you. There is nothing they can do with you. You can sit down, you know, it, cause you know, sometimes our schedules get hectic and you have to eat in the car, go through a drive through and you drive with one hand, eating with the other hand. No, that's not what he's talking about. You prepared a table for me. I'm going to sit down banquet style and you're going to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. I'm going to let you guys going to let your enemies see how blessed you are. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. You know, when, when David was actually anointed king, Samuel was there and he had the, the horn above David's head. And the way that that is, it would be the equivalent of having a bottle of oil turned upside down over your head and it won't come out. It's just blocked. But when David came, that oil, it flowed and it went all over him. It just saturated him. That's what we want from the anointing of God. We want my cup run it over. You know, they have this thing where, where do you see is your cup half empty? I think if you see the cup as half empty, you're a pessimist. If you see the cup as half full, you're supposed to be an optimist. Well, my cup runneth over because I am a child of God. God will just bless you. And we, that's where we want to live. That's where we want to dwell in the overflow of God. I don't really know we're, we're falling into this mindset, right? Of survival. I'm just surviving. That's not what God told me to do. Jesus said, I come that you may have life and that more abundantly. And I guarantee you, if you can take the posture that David has in this psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Just write in the comments, I shall not want. And it was funny when I was little, I thought that that meant that you're not supposed to want anything, but this actually means that we are not going to lack anything because as a good shepherd, God will supply all of our needs and he will protect us through life. And here we go with my favorite one. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely, that's another one of those words. When you when you're talking about God, surely, most definitely, without a doubt, goodness and mercy is going to follow me. Now, if God is leading you and goodness and mercy is following you, you're surrounded. Right? There's a, a praise song that says, When it looks like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. You got the Lord leading you, and you got goodness and mercy following you. And it, it all the days of your life. No matter what, on the good days, on the bad days, you got goodness and mercy following you. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Another one of these songs, I keep talking about it. You know, as I get older, these old songs mean something. Say, this world is not my home. I'm just passing.
passing by. My hopes and all my treasures where? They're all laid up on high. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you make that your priority, making it to the city, dwelling with the Lord forever, when that is your focus, you won't be sidetracked, depressed, discouraged by the things that happen in the world and the cares of life down here because your focus is higher. And then when you focus on God, it's somewhat of an of a, a oxymoron because when you focus on God and that's where your goal is, he handles all of the things down here. But if you worry and stress and strive for earthly things, then sometimes they escape us because your focus is not on the shepherd. The sheep, and I want to go back to where it says your rod, I may have skipped that part, your rod and your staff, they come for me, rod for correction, the staff to lead you and keep you on the right path. See, sometimes we look at all of this stuff and I watch everything now talks about spirituality and they'll use the term spiritual instead of God and you got to be careful with that because it's a lot of spirits but see here we're talking about the spirit of the one true and living God and in this post pandemic era I don't know about you but my experience has been that so many things that I had confidence in failed crumbled and it left me kind of feeling like I didn't really know who was who what was what I didn't really know who I could go to who I could trust or who was gonna stand but there's one thing that we know like the subject says confidence in God's shepherding if there's ever been a time where you have to trust and depend on God that time is now and, and I'm gonna go back to this very first line of this song because again that's where it's just power packed the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want Whatever it is that you are lacking in your life, I dare you this week to give it to God. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. If it's not working, let it go and focus on following the guiding, the guidance and allow God to really shepherd you and trust him. And you will see, you will find yourself in a place where you are complete you are whole and you are lacking nothing because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want.